Okay, if you have worked through chapter 13 in your book, which is all that I want you to do for this week, aside from this assignment, then you might be somewhat overwhelmed by the information that was provided to you. But I want you to try to put everything out of your mind and just focus on the things that I'm going to have you do. Okay? We could literally, I'm not exaggerating at all, we could take an entire semester and talk about projections. There are many different types of projections. There are many theories on which ones are more correct because the Earth is not a flat surface. It's not even a perfect circle, so it's difficult to translate to something like this on your computer screen where it looks like it's flat, and we all know it's not. We have projections so that we can take the data from physical locations on the Earth, uh, geometry-wise, and put them into a mapping system, and that way they can tie to other features relative to each other in terms of distance or spatial references. Okay, And without getting into too much detail on a lot of technical mumbo-jumbo that's just going to fry your brain, I want you guys to know two things. And you don't have to know anything about projections, but if you know these two things, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches, okay? And I absolutely am going to ask you on your test to give a typed response about the difference between defining a projection and simply reprojecting something that's already projected, okay? I'm going to say that again. I will test you, and you're going to have to give a typed response that I'm going to grade uh, from just making sure that you understood it, what the difference is between defining a projection and just projecting something that's already that already has a projection definition. What I mean by that, right here, I've got this data, and it's free. I'll show you where to get that in just a moment. But in your toolbox, which if you don't have it up already on the side like I do, you can just uh, you can just pull it up from this command right here, the Arc Toolbox, right next to where your scale is. It's the Arc Toolbox command. What you'll want to do is go to Data Management Tools, and then you'll go down to Projections and Transformations. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's where you've got your two options, okay? And this is what's going to be on your test. You had Define Projection and Project. I always had trouble, because I didn't really understand projections until a couple of years after school, differentiating when I should use this tool versus the other tool. Okay, To begin with, if you have something like this, and again if you read your text you would know, but just for reference you can go to properties and it'll tell you under the source tab what your projection is. Okay, So if you have a projection then it's going to tell you right here all the information that you have under that projection. You don't, you don't have to know what any of this means, but if you have something projected, it's going to tell you what projected coordinate system the data is in. So this data is already projected. If you have something that's already projected, you're going to use the project tool. And if you double click on it, it tells you project spatial data from one coordinate system to another. So what you're doing because a lot of data may not have projections. You may get some data in projection A, but you need it to be in projection B. And I'll go into more, more on that in just a moment. But this is what you use. You use the project tool. When you get something and you're not familiar with the projection tool, and you know that you need to change it. Okay, And it's very simple. All you have to do is follow the instructions. That Some of them are in your text. It's not all. But it's very simple. You just add the data that you want to reproject again you're reprojecting it it tells you what's already here and you're going to go ahead and pick a place put mine in the projection assignment folder county reproject name it something familiar in a place that you can find it okay now the output coordinate system is where you go in and you choose okay and you have all these options but what we're going to work with in this assignment that I'm going to give you, you're going to go to Projected Coordinate Systems, State Plane, you're going to go to NAD, which is North American Datum, okay, you're going to go down to US Feet, open that, and since I live in Henderson and that's where the KCTCS location that I teach from is, 
you're gonna go down to Kentucky and it's gonna be south okay and I'll show you some more about that in just a moment but you're gonna pick NAD 1983 state playing Kentucky South FIPS 1602 US feet say okay don't worry about the geographic transformation and then just click okay now you'll notice that nothing got added to your map but if you go to add data it's right there the county reproject okay so essentially what you've done and if you add it ArcMap is going to project on the fly okay well, what that means is the first piece of data that you put into your map is going to be what the whole map data is set in so if it's the NAD 1983 or NAD 27 whatever it is it's going to default to that so you're not going to see any changes and you shouldn't see any changes but if you wanted to make a completely different map you just open up another version of ArcMap and then you add the data that you just reprojected right here okay and it looks the same but if you were to add something off the wall that wasn't a completely different projection, it's not going to line up. Especially if you have something like a CAD drawing. If it's not in the right projection, it's not going to line up. And that's because different coordinates are used for the XY values in placing geographic features. And that's why projections are so important. And it's really difficult to wrap your head around for some people, and it takes a lot of practice. But just know for this class, if you have something that you know is projected, and again, check by going here, Properties, and see if it's got a projected coordinate system, it will say uh, unknown if it doesn't. So if you've got something, that's when you use, again, I'll show you, Data Management Tools, Projections and Transformations, Project. Okay. Now, I don't have a free piece of data here, but if you did, if you, ha if you brought something in, or you make a new feature, which we'll do in later chapters, later exercises, that's when you use the define projection. Never, ever, 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 never, ever use define projection on something that already has a projected coordinate system. Used to, it didn't show you this, but if you put in, if you put in the one right now, it'll give you a warning. It says the data set already has a projection defined. So hopefully for you all, it's a little clearer and it's a little easier to avoid this mistake but for me they didn't add this until a few versions later it used to be really easy to know that you had to define a projection or change the projection because the data wasn't lining up and that's always nine times out of ten that's what your problem is is you don't have matching projections and sometimes people will go to divine protection or excuse me divine protection define projection and completely mess up their data and that's one thing that you'll have to re-download it or recreate it in the worst case scenario and you don't want to be in that situation so it's going to give you this caution error caution cone and it's going to tell you hey this already has a projection so you don't want to do that but if it didn't have a projection and you drew it on a CAD drawing or you knew exactly what it was then like the tooltip says this tool is going to override a coordinate system if it's already got one so you're erasing what was there and putting something that is probably not correct in its place but if there's nothing there to begin with then you're just defining where those coordinates would go on a grid based on its projection okay and I know that's that's a lot that's a lot to pick up and I'm gonna put some resources and some links for you to maybe look at more of an in-depth if you're interested or if you care about what projections are and how the different states are divided up we really could spend an entire semester on talking about projections and how they work. But for the purposes of this class, I just want you to know how to reproject something, which is project. And if you don't, if you make something from scratch, which hopefully some of you will do for your project, then you're going to have to define the projection, okay? And I'm going to talk about that in a later chapter. But for the projections, a week before spring break, all I want you to worry about is the difference between project and define projection okay and you also need to know a few of the things from the text about how to figure out whether something has a projection and how to navigate through the different menus to get to that information don't have to understand what it is I'm not gonna test you on that you just need to know again just so I know I'm beating a dead horse but I really want you guys to to make sure this is ingrained in your GIS knowledge but know the difference between these two tools and also know how to just find and tell me like if I said hey 
what is the projection of this data? What coordinate system is in? You can say, well, the projected coordinate system is, bam, right there. Okay. So those are the three big things, and that's a good starting spot for a beginner class on Geographic Information System. And like I said, I'll, I'll post some links, and if you want to get to into some deeper water with projections, then absolutely I encourage you to do so, but it's not, not required for this class, okay? So move forward at your, at your own leisure, and I will be posting the information on your assignment shortly.